Welcome to playing D&D and this guide to building your first paladin. Paladins are half tank, half support, and all epic. That's why the music in this video is a little extra. In this video, we will take you step by step through the process of creating a great starting paladin, so you can dig into having fun playing D&D with your friends faster. We are building this paladin on D&D Beyond, the official D&D toolset that makes D&D easier to play. Register for free and click Create a Character. Select Standard so you can build your character step by step. It's helpful in understanding what the stuff on your character sheet means. And don't forget to click Show Help Text for helpful advice along the way. But if you're really pressed for time and your game is starting like five minutes ago, you can choose Quick Build. Select your character options and bam, you have a character. If you're still with us on the standard path, you'll begin your brief journey on this character preferences screen. Unless your dungeon master has some stuff they'd like you to click or unclick, leave all this be and hit next. Time to make some choices. In this build, we're suggesting you play a Dragonborn. They look awesome and they get a strength bonus, which is going to come in handy later. We're choosing gold for our draconic ancestry, which means that your paladin also breathes fire. Unless your heart has succumbed to the temptations of evil, you're choosing to play a paladin here, so hit add class. Now we have a couple more decisions to make about which proficiencies we're going to pick up. Paladins are usually strength focused. It's hard work caring about justice so much. So we are going to lean into this and choose athletics. We are also picking up intimidation here to intimidate other people into making morally just decisions when the fire breathing doesn't do the trick. You also get two class features, divine sense and lay on hands. Divine sense allows you to literally smell evil and Lay on Hands gives you a pool of healing to draw from. Let's head to the next step and look at our ability scores. Okay, what do these mean? Strength. How heavy of a sword can you carry to ride forth and smite evil? Constitution. How many hits can you take while smiting evil? Dexterity. Can you stay balanced if evil tries to trip you up while you're smiting it? Intelligence. How much do you know about the evil you're smiting? Wisdom. What observations can you make about the evil you need to smite that could assist in the smiting? And charisma. Can you lay down your sword and defeat evil with a really good monologue and a hug? Here you're presented with three options, standard array, point by, or manual. Ask your DM which they prefer you use. They're all fine and really just depend on what your dungeon master likes. For this example, we'll be doing standard array, but any way you do it, here are the guidelines for a typical paladin. Strength should be your highest score, then charisma, then constitution, then the rest are up to you. Now let's move forward to the backgrounds. These can add some depth and backstory to your character and give you some additional proficiencies and minor traits. Some popular options for paladins include the acolyte, soldier, and noble. We'll be going with noble. You get proficiencies in history and persuasion, which will help with knowing things and convincing people you know things. We also get to choose a language. We are going with Dwarvish, just in case we encounter any big stone doors you need a password to enter. It happens more than you think. <laughs> Lastly, we get the position of privilege feature, which allows us to make ourselves at home among the pompous and pretentious people of the world. Then you can flesh out some personality characteristics and details like appearance and alignment. This is what kind of a person you are. It's fun to dig into, but not a requirement for first timers, so don't stress too much, and we're not going to here either. Hit next and let's get suited up for adventure. You've got a choice between starting equipment or enough gold to buy some in your game. Unless you're particularly into bargain hunting, we suggest going with starting equipment. We want our paladin to be a force to be reckoned with, both offensively and defensively, so we are going with a long sword and a shield. Then, just so we have some ranged options, we'll pick up five javelins. And seeing as we've got some exploring to do, let's grab an explorer's pack. We're automatically given chainmail, and you get to choose your holy symbol. You can choose from a variety of options. We'll choose an amulet, but this choice doesn't impact your gameplay. We've also been given some stuff from our noble background, like a set of fine clothes and a signet ring, just in case we're invited to fancy parties. Strong attacks, healing, and that party life? Paladins are pretty well-rounded. 
We're all finished with this step. Time to hit add starting equipment. You're all done and ready to storm into battle with your righteous warrior. Well, not quite yet, but soon. Let's take a look at our character sheet. You can give your character a name, upload a picture, change the style of your sheet, and most importantly, click everything. The first thing to click is inventory and equip your chainmail, longsword, javelins, and shield. See how our AC automatically went up and we can choose the longsword or javelin option under actions? Now you can hit stuff with your sword while hopefully evading your enemy's attacks. On to the other good stuff. Wherever you see a number on this sheet, you can click it and it will roll the necessary dice. Has someone questioned your honor? Roll to attack. If you miss, roll persuasion to convince them it was a warning shot. If you hit, roll damage. Now let's say on your adventures, you've managed to level up to second level. Congrats! Among other upgrades, your paladin can now cast some spells. You'll be able to learn three first level spells. First, we'll pick up Shield of Faith because it's a bonus action spell that makes our already suited up paladin even harder to hit. We'll also grab Command in case any of our enemies have the gall to resist our intimidation. Last, we'll take Bless, cause nothing says bless you like an extra d4 to three of your party members' attacks and saving throws. If all that sounded like nonsense, just ask your DM. After we've hit prepare next to each of these spells, you'll be able to view them on your character sheet and track your spell slots when you cast them. One last thing before you go. At second level, you'll also gain access to your Divine Smite. This ability is one of the primary reasons paladins have such a shining reputation. When you hit an enemy with your sword, you can expend a spell slot and deal a bunch of extra radiant damage to whatever unfortunate creature is on the receiving end of your sword. You'll have to balance your spellcasting with your smites, as they both use up spell slots, so spend them wisely. Well, we're all done with our tutorial, but your paladin is just getting started. Like the fire exploding from your dragonborn paladin's mouth, I'm sure it'll be a blast.